is a challenge that few have ever dared to go after. The challenge of having both strength and contact with a wet mess. But we're gonna go ahead and do it. So today we're gonna to talk about how to design an ice cream scoop for mass production 3D printing. So the very first ice cream scoop was first patented in 1876 by William George Cluel, and it was designed to be basically a cone with a little spinner on the inside and a handle, so that once you scooped up the ice cream, you could do a little twist and then the ice cream would fall out. Right now, much of the ice cream that was consumed was either at bars or at soda fountains. And at this point, the root beer float hadn't even been invented. But it was actually first manufactured out of tin with a wooden handle that was attached to the edge of it, though it did have some utilitarian designs where there was just a tin scoop with a little spinner on the inside and then a tin handle coming out the side. It continued to evolve from there, including having dozens of ice cream scoops into the future. But the design continued to evolve and continued to be reinforced and re-optimized until you finally got to kind of the traditional and well-known ice cream scoop today, which is a round spoon with a little flipper on the inside in order to knock out the ice cream. It actually got simpler over time. But the ice cream scoop is actually a fairly challenging thing to create because you need something that is strong enough to take the abuse of people trying to get hard ice cream out of a well-frozen tub, as well as having to deal with is it able to be cleaned and that kind of thing over time? Is it able to have a lifetime attached to it? This means it has to be made very robust and ideally have the way to get the ice cream out of it, which can be a challenge. Now, a lot of this is always made with stamping. A few ice cream scoops are made with casts, but generally some sort of stamped metal with a handle attached to it is still the traditional way of making ice cream. But 3D printing is able to produce these types of objects too, and you're able to make all kinds of useful utensils using mass production printing. And now that there's tools like our Shopify, Etsy plugin, and API, they can be produced on demand so you eliminate the entire supply chain that would normally be necessary for this type of invention. So let's go ahead and look at how we would go ahead and design an ice cream scoop. Well, first of all, you need it to be strong. This is a baseline thing. If the ice cream scoop snaps while people are using it, it's really not that useful. So what we did was we made sure that the back edge of the scoop was very, very reliable. We made sure that it was a little bit extra thick, and of course you put a nice thin blade on there. And then the overall handle itself is really thick. While it is printed with an infill, that infill keeps it lightweight, but you still have the structure on the inside of here. There's no way this handle is ever going to break down. That thicker handle also allows a more ergonomic type of grip. Many ice cream handles are really, really thin because they're limited to minimizing material with processes like casting or stamping. But if you are able to use 3D printing, you're able to make these really thick, chunky types of objects that can be way more ergonomic to hold on to because you don't have to try to grip tightly a really thin little thing. You can just lightly rest your hand around this deal. That also conforms to the overall outline of your hand and creates all kinds of other benefits. In addition to that, we also just made it so it could be stood on its end. That way you could like place it on your counter or somewhere where it's useful without having to throw it into a drawer necessarily. Again, the thickness of 3D printed parts give all kinds of new competitive advantages. Now the question comes up, the scoop itself. Well, the scoops, like we say, have always generally been some sort of hemisphere. The very first one being a cone and then evolving into circular hemispheres as manufacturing got better. But with us, we knew that we weren't able to put one of those little flipper feet into it in order to knock out the ice cream scoop. We needed to be able to be sure that this could remove the ice cream itself. The way you do that is we made a hemisphere scoop so that you can get the scoop, but then since we needed to print it on its side anyway and would need to truncate the two outer edges because we don't want a full hemisphere in this, we were gonna have to crop off the two edges in order to make it symmetric and make it printable in this direction, again, to improve strength we would crop off the outer edge of the hemisphere. So now, once you get the scoop, you scrape it off on the edge of the bowl that you're doing and that whole scoop pretty much comes out. The flipper becomes a part of the bowl. And while this could have been manufactured before, we're taking it now. And of course, last little touch, we're able to put text along the inner side. And if you were doing mass production with this or even print on demand, you would be able to iterate on that and change it to different designs, say chocolate only or my vanilla spoon or whatever you might want there. Or maybe a company logo if you were wanting to do like a promotional run. Those are all feasible with this and very easily. And then lastly, of course, we added some nice little ergonomic grips on the back so it fits very nicely in your hand right there. 
Now, ultimately, this creates an ice cream scoop that has extra utility, better ergonomics, is still just as strong as anything else you would ever want in order to break ice cream with, and it looks really good. It's a nice object with a different sort of aesthetic than any other ice cream scoop generally has. So printing is able to create an equivalent product or even a better product. Now, a few people down in the comments are now saying things like food safe and this kind of thing. Is there concern about having FDM printed parts in contact with food? No, not really. This one was made out of PLA. We will be releasing PETG very soon, so you'll be able to print that so these can be thrown into the dishwasher. At that point, it doesn't really even matter. You can rinse this with cool water and that's fine. The plastic itself, PLA, can be put in contact with food. That's not a problem. It's not very temperature resistant, but again, we're putting it in ice cream, so this doesn't even matter. Then you can rinse it with cool or even hot water and that's not a big deal. So it can be sterilized and that's fine. Additionally, materials like wood cutting boards that have like fish blood on them can be rinsed off with water and fine. 3D printed parts can be perfectly food safe so long as you have them printed well, designed well so that there aren't opportunities for all kinds of problems to get in there. Because if you design with like bad design with like fillets at the bottom where you create permeations in the exterior shell of the part, that can be an issue because stuff can wheedle in into the part. But if you design it uniformly and reliably to where it has a nice cohesive outer wall, then it's not really an issue. It can be washed, it can be cleaned, the layers themselves aren't a necessarily bad issue. Food safe really just depends on the design of the product itself. It has nothing to do with the process by which you make the product. 3D printing can make perfectly food safe parts. And for something like this, which is ice cream, it's not like you're dipping this in raw eggs and then going and licking it after you let it sit in the hot sun for three months. It's not really that big of an issue. This is a very common utensil in the realm of like cookie cutters or measuring cups and that kind of thing where it's something that can be very reliable and a very good product for normal people without causing any sort of issues. So is it food safe? Yeah, certainly. In this video, we produced a couple of these using both our matte black and red from our print on demand apps right now. Both of them are in PLA. If we were to adjust the design of this a little bit to optimize it a bit more, there is a little bit of a danger of warping at this outer tip on the base. And in fact, we have uh, one example that did get pretty darn warped there. Um, in order to refine that a little bit, we would place just a small mouse ear on that the next time around. We thought we would maybe get away with it for the prototypes, but it turns out that it is necessary. We could also reduce uh, the outer curvature of this just a hair, because it does end up creating just a little bit of an overhang to where it can be unstable in printing. Uh, the extra, this outer ridge as well, could also be squeezed in just a hair to make it a tad more ergonomic, so there's always tweaks. But hey, we make three videos a week. We can't optimize everything the last 1% every single video. But comment down below if there's other sorts of appliances and that kind of thing that you would like to see us redesign for mass production 3D printing. This thing could be put into Walmart very easily today and mass produced inside of our giant print farms. So it's a really exciting time to be alive because printing can make real objects really well and do it at scale. Have a great day, everybody.